away. So, you, know, you know, but absolutely. You know, to understand that impact occurs there and then hmm, down the line, get over that insight team. Stay here. Hang on to this position. Hold this position. By the way, the other thing I've learned is players with poor core strength can't do that. They can't do that. Players that have no core strength cannot stay here. Right? There's a little, there's a whole lot going on right now. So what they want to do, I can't do that. Right? It's one of the reasons why you gotta, you got to get strong. You've got to get strong. you got to, you, you know, as I move through that window, boom, I want to stay here as I hit, I need some core strength to keep it in. And absolutely, Dirk, I mean, wham! Here's my, here's where I want to be post-impact. You should see Chris Heisey on the video. Oh my gosh. I mean, Heisey's like, ugh. You want to talk about a window of success. I mean, his window of success is, is huge. But, but, Dirk, eventually they got to turn it loose. And then we're hoping they don't sweep that inside. Yeah. He's also like, I, I, I sell the press. Yeah, yeah, the old thing is they'll say my yeah. stuff. But you know what? I've seen some pretty good hitters and I've dealt with stuff like that. Because I, mean, I mean, I'd always look at the better hitters I was around. Larry Walker, the guys I got like close to. Right, like he just close. There wasn't a whole lot of them. But a lot of them did not, you know, it might just be a little off. What you just don't want is this. With that top hand. I mean, these it, it don't have to necessarily line up. If they do, that's fine. But but I mean, it's not like, hey, you gotta get them lined up. I would never do Yeah, get away from just this thing, this top hand, get in a position. You're gonna look at the knuckles where the top of my knuckles and these knuckles. I mean, that's, you don't want that. And, and that's an immediate bad, uh, bad pattern. Because you, you're choking the bat. First off, if my top hand gets in that position, the bat's gonna be deep in my palm. And you don't want that. And then it's gonna be a position like this where it's gonna be immediately that top hand's gonna I'm going to tell you what, what we call public enemy number one. We all have flaws, but what I consider public enemy number one is the dominant top hand. Think about your team and how many of your kids throw left and hit right or throw right and hit left. Significantly less than right, right, left, left. Okay? The, the, the throw right, hit left is more common than the throw left, hit right. But it's still, it's, it's, very, it's uncommon. So usually what you see, what we see, is we see the top hand want to want to do this hard, hard, right? So now you're in this position. Now, as you move through that ball right there, you're already in a tough spot to have, to have success. So one of two things is going to happen. You're going to go at that ball and you're going to pop it up because you're, you're below it. Or the other thing you can do is you say, you know what, I'm in a bad spot. I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble. i got to fix this now. And you'll see that right hand roll hard over the left. You know, and everyone knows a rollover, a rollover. You don't want the right hand to roll over the left. But, but I, believe, I believe that it starts right now. If, if you can't, when that front heel lands, and I'm going to get into this in a second, when that front heel lands, <laughs> This needs to be your attack move. Your front side needs to start pulling hard instead of that back side causing this long, hard swing. Again, do you need to know this? No. But if they can't drive this ball without hitting this one, they should know something's wrong. I got to be able to drive this thing without hitting that one. The other thing is also true. We've got to be able to hit this ball without hitting this one. And many of our guys, we call it casting or sweeping. They'll take that lead arm and they'll go, Whoosh! and they'll throw it out. And then on their way to that inside pitch, they'll just sweep them over. Okay? And, you know, I, some of you I've worked with your kids, I've said, you know, why do they make golf clubs different lengths? Why don't they all make this? Why, why, why is it all the same length as a five iron? Because we want, we want each club to do something different. We want the driver to hit further. We want the pitching wedge to control it. But we don't have the luxury of switching clubs. But what we have, what we should be able to do is adjust if need be. This lead arm is my driver. <clears throat> if, I, if, if I can keep that sucker stretched as I move through the ball, 
I'm going to have most club head speed, bat head speed, boom, at impact. Right? If you watch home run derby when they're allowed to take pitches that they don't really, really like, they all look like that. Now you're like, just stretching across his chest, swinging a drive all the time. In a game, however, you might have to hit that ball. And what you're going to want to teach is, I don't want you to take that driver and sweep it, because that's not going to be successful in a game. But we're going to take that driver and we're going to turn it into a pitching wave. <sighs> because we've got to try to get to that position. And impact looks like that. Now all of a sudden this thing is pinched, trying to adjust to an inside pitch location. Again, do you have to spend 20 minutes with a kid and write it down? No, I love it because when you can watch from a distance and go, hey, hit the inside ball. Daddy, keep an eye on his feet, don't let him cheat. Don't let him cheat, don't let him cheat, you know? They can feel successful, but they're not getting any better. Get them in there and let them see if they can get to that ball on their own. That bat path is a little bit flatter than that bat path. Okay? Any questions with that, that simple little drill? Oh, no. Oh, no. It does. It does. Absolutely. It does. In fact, yeah, you know, again, you got to... Great players have great imagination. If you go up with one tee and just whack away at it with nothing in mind, it's not really successful. But we do it all the time. In every class we do, our little guys all of us are big guys. We'll prop those mounds like that. The little guys will probably hit from right here. The next group will hit from here. Our oldest kids will hit back and we'll say, drive the mound, drive the mound, drive the mound. Hit a ball off the mound. First team to 10 wins. Here we go, three shots each. So, you know, they line up and they're ready to go. And why we love it, because it doesn't matter the location. We want to be flat through the window. So if we're moving through the ball like this, that thing's going to come off that, drive that mount. Just instant feedback, drive the mount, drive the mount, drive the mount. When we prop the mounds up and put a body bar behind it. Because if you're driving the mound, you'll knock it down. And we don't want to do that, right? And if you do knock it down quickly, go pick it up. Yeah. You want both hands up so they have to drive the left or right, or you just work with one? I like both up. Both up. Both up. Create, anything that creates competition with kids is really time well spent. So you go like this, you go like this. Older kids, I put the T at this crease line, this crease line. Be careful of your lefties. I always put the lefties over here so the righties and the lefties aren't doing a little bit of dance. Lefties always have to hit on this side. First team to 10 wins, first team to 12 wins. Yeah, you guys can decide if you want to count short hops or not. But how about if you have a team in the middle and you only have one at a time? And, well, if you have one at a time, what I probably say to the team, I say, all right, guys, we put the clock on you for three minutes. I want the ball hitting the mound 15 times or we're doing this. Ready? Go. Yeah, that's what I would do that. But you know what I mean? Sometimes you want to drive the right. Sometimes yeah, but, right. but absolutely. But the thing that I found is I can control the center. If I put a tee dead center, I can with certainty say, hey, get the, the, the tee. Get I can control that better than anything. Yeah. Absolutely. Billy and I have a lot of different drills, and we fight like crazy with certain kids. Look, you, you've got to create a little coordination with their front arm. You've got to create some coordination. So in that locker are small back of all time. This is one that I've used today. And what I'll do is, is here, the, the other problem that, uh, that occurs with that dominant top hand is when, when you're a hitter and the first thing you do is this, all your weight shifts down here. Let's talk about balance. And so how do you get balanced? If, if this is the manner in which you're moving, what, what, why, why are we doing that? Well, because you're taking 31 ounces and you're quickly dropping it on your back foot. Of course I'm going to be unbalanced. Right? So what do I need to do? Well, I need the heaviest part of the bat sitting right on my midline. I need the heaviest part of the bat sitting right on my midline so I can stay balanced. Then what I like to do is I like to support the lead arm. I don't like one-hand drills without any support. 